Good evening and welcome to my presentation about teaching and learning here at Kingston High School. My name is Rachel Finch and I have the great privilege of being an assistant head teacher here at Kingston High. And I'm also in charge of teaching and learning, which means it's my responsibility to ensure that your child has the best education that we can possibly provide them. I'd like to first start by talking about our motto, achieving success together. I know that my colleagues will also be talking about this, but I think it's really important that we reiterate our key message for you as parents. We want to work with you and your child to ensure that your child achieves all that they are capable of. They are at the heart of all that we do. They are our business and it is up to us to ensure that we work with you to give them the best possible chance, the best possible future. Before your child will join us here at Kingston, we gather information from the primary schools about where they are with regards to their learning. We look at their standard assessment tests, their SAT scores in reading, writing, spelling, maths and science. We look at these as well as gathering other information from the primary schools that they feel would be useful, would be beneficial for us to have in order to help your child make progress. When they arrive at Kingston, we also complete a series of tests to ensure that we have a comprehensive starting point of your child. We look at things like a reading test to find out their reading age. We um, give a dyslexia screening test to ensure, ensure that any issues with regards reading and writing are picked up early so that we can intervene and support. There will also be some smaller and um, more informal assessments done by perhaps uh, specific subjects, a piece of writing, a quick quiz, just to gather information about the starting point for your child. One of the things that we value here at Kingston is reading. It is so important to us that your child can read and comprehend what they are reading. A study completed by the University of Dundee in 2018 showed that the vast majority of GCSE students, 16 year olds, actually entered their exams with a reading age of three years younger that automatically puts those children at a disadvantage. They can't understand the questions they're being asked, so therefore how on earth are they going to be able to answer them? We don't want a child to be hindered by their inability to read. So we have reading lessons in English, we put great emphasis on reading within our other curriculum areas, and we also have a 20 minute daily slot for everyone reads in Kingston, our Eric time, where children are expected to read silently and enjoy reading to help encourage them and support them further with this essential skill. At Kingston, we really pride ourselves on giving a very broad based curriculum. What this means is that we allow your child to be part of a range of subjects. We want them to have a curriculum that does the arts, that covers the sciences, the humanities, and all the core things, but also has time for computing, for drama, for design and technology, for food and nutrition, for all those subjects which make a child a well-rounded individual. We pride ourselves on our curriculum being sequential, which means that they start in year seven and they work through up until they're at GCSE. So as you can see on my slide, we have what we call 11 to 16 pathway. That means from 11 years to 16 year, years old, they're on this journey, this academic journey that takes them through from understanding and developing things in seven and eight to going all the way through to the GCSE core skills needed for them to make full uh, use of their time and in order to be able to progress effectively. So the core subjects are English and maths, which we have at Kingston. They have six lessons of these a fortnight. Again, that it is just a subject, uh, subjects where they are revising and embedding skills and knowledge that they will have been taught in primary school and then building on these and developing these, as I said, to begin their GCSE journey. 
They're taught in mixed ability as we feel this gives them the best opportunity to be successful in these formative years at secondary school. We then have our EBAC subjects, which is our English baccalaureate subjects. These are science, humanities and languages, and they have different amounts of time depending on the subject. So as you can see, they have seven lessons for biology, chemistry and physics, and they're broken down into the three sciences. They're taught as separate entities. They then have four lessons, a fortnight of geography and history, and then four lessons of the modern foreign language, which we teach here, which is French. Obviously, we are building on skills, building on knowledge that they previously have acquired. But again, as I keep saying, they were developing and progressing them onto that GCSE journey. We then are, as I've said previously, immensely proud of our open element subjects. So these are open in the sense that a child will choose these, select these when they enter year nine to sort of reduce in a way their curriculum so they hone in on key things that they want to look at. So we have drama, we have computing, music, all the things that we feel allow a child to become a well-rounded individual. We're giving them as much choice as we possibly can. Not only do we have curriculum um, areas, but we also have form time and social studies inbuilt into our timetable. We think it's really important that these, this designated time is given to again allow your child to understand things like values, to understand what it means to be a good citizen, to understand what it means to be a productive member of society, which is ultimately what we want for your child. They have two les lessons, a fortnight of social studies, and they have one form time a fortnight. It's always on a Monday, week one, lesson one, sets the tone for the learning for the next two weeks. So that's in school, but also we know the true value of education also means that ch children are going to need to do some work at home. We call this blended learning because we are learning, sorry, I apologize, we are blending their learning between home and school. So things that we ask them to do at home are things that will embed, reinforce, revisit, revise the learning that has taken place within the classroom with the professional in front of them. As you can see from my chart here, that we build that up gradually. Now we're fully aware that a lot of primary schools do give homework. We understand that, but we also understand that there is a lot going on in a year seven's life, which is very different from what they are used to. So we don't push all homeworks on them from the beginning. We gradually introduce them to it. So in the autumn term, we start with the core subjects. The spring term, we have the core and add in the EBAC. And then summer term, we have the core, the um, open elements and the EBAC subjects. So by the summer term, they're getting a blended learning tasks from all areas, but we've gradually introduced that to them. So it feels less scary, less formidable for them. And it also helps them understand how to structure their own time at home which is a major skill in order to be able to achieve at GCSE. Blended learning tasks are recorded on our Go for School system and you as parents and carers can download a parent app so you have instant access and you can see what's been set, when it's due, how the child accesses the work. Because these are short, quick tasks, we give a minimum of 48 hour turnaround. So Old school, we used to kind of give a week, but now we give 48 hour turnaround so that that member of staff can really use that information they're getting from the, the work done at home and they can use it to inform their planning for the next lessons and the next sequence of learning. Assessments. I won't go into this too much, but you'll be able to see from my sides, slides that we have sort of two major um, forms of assessment, formative, which is the constant checking and monitoring that we do throughout a unit of work. It's the quick quizzes, the quickly do a concept map, map summarize the learning from the previous lesson, um, fastest finger first on the button, you know, these sort of really quick tasks where a, a member of staff can evaluate very quickly who's understood, who hasn't, 
what needs to be revisited, what needs to be embedded, and what we can move on from. The other side of that, we have then the summative, the end result uh, assessment, which is more formal. So that might take the form of an end of unit exam, a final project, a midterm assessment. That is where a child will sit an assessment normally done under formal exam conditions. And that assessment will gauge what they have learned at that moment in time. So it's that sort of check, where are they at? What have they achieved? What skills and content are they showing they have understood? That's kind of like a cut point for us to be able to say, at this moment in time, your child is achieving X, Y, and Z because this is the evidence for it. Now, I'll just briefly go through this. I'm sure that you as parents are aware that the fact that the grading system changed from the old grades to the new grades back in 2017, with maths and English being the first two subjects to be awarded grades on the new grading system. You can see that there are now nine grades, grade nine being the highest grade, and you can see that it is higher than the old A star. Very few students achieve the grade nine. It really is a true um, credit to the child and to the school and to the parents when a child achieves that grade nine. They're hard to come by. They are very, very um, difficult to come by um, and they need to be and they show a real understanding of the child and that subject in that subject. You'll see that the old standard pass, that old sort of grade C, is now a grade four and a grade five. You had a standard pass, and then above that, you have a strong pass. So you have those two variants now. With all assessments, we want your child to reflect on that, to actually improve from that. Teachers spend a lot of time giving feedback, either orally or through the written word. And so we need your child to take that on board and actually learn from it and move forward with it. So we want your child to hear, heed any advice given and follow by the professionals. We want them to develop this culture of being resilient and accepting um, criticism when it's constructive. So that was great. Could you have thought about doing this? I'd like to see this in your next piece. And individual subjects give what we call dirt lessons, dedicated improvement and reflection time. These are lessons where your child has specific time to be able to go back and revisit the work they've just done. So they can edit things, they can redo bits of work, they can extend things, they can use the guidance from the teacher to improve. And that's it. Really, our passion is your child and ensuring that your child can become all that they can be and that we can do this by achieving success together. So thank you for listening to me. Thank you for your time. Enjoy the rest of your evening.